Do you know what £350 will buy you? An Xbox, television, maybe even a weekend away. How about 267 million Facebook identities? Because that's how much they go for on the dark web. You see, gone are the days of hacking for status. That's make believe and best save for Hollywood. Today, system compromises are a byproduct of financial gain. And if data is indeed the new oil, then security must become the container in which it's protected. According to the UK government, 653,000 businesses lack the expertise to fully secure their resources and align to industry governance. 653,000. That's almost half. In fact, when we look at those statistics, is it surprising that they experience a breach typically every 23 seconds? In today's video, I'm joined by security specialist Ali Turnbull, who's going to help me understand Microsoft's position in helping companies address security concerns and then demonstrate some of the tooling that makes it possible. Ali, welcome. Thanks, Dan. So I'm a cloud solution architect. I work in Microsoft's One Commercial Partner team, and in my role, I specialize in helping partners build security, compliance, and identity practices. Thanks, Ali. So in my last video, I spoke about identities and highlighted why they are considered the primary perimeter for company security. I demonstrated solutions such as conditional access, multi-factor authentication, single sign-on and self-service password management. And I think that most companies are now beginning to realize the importance of these steps. We know that with employees working remotely and consuming resources from personal devices, the traditional focus on network security must evolve. But here's the thing, with a skills deficit on a global scale, how do companies know this? How do companies take the necessary steps to improve their security posture and what tools have Microsoft made available to them? Security needs to be top of mind for all businesses and frankly, it's a daunting task. Let me give you an example. In a typical day, you can expect around 200 updates from over 700 regulatory bodies. This on top of the proliferation of new devices, new applications, and the thousands of signals that will be detected from services such as threat intelligence means that managing this on your own is unrealistic. Fortunately, Microsoft supplies businesses with the tools that enable you to get a bird's eye view of your security posture. Let's begin with Azure Security Center. This will allow you to view your company's security posture by means of a simple score. Think of it as a point in time measurement that gives you complete visibility across your subscriptions, allowing you to track recommendations and evaluate how your environment looks today. Currently, there are two flavors, both of which will include the Azure security score. If I open pricing plans, you can see the differences. Azure Defender Off is effectively the free tier this offers Azure Secure Score through a service that continually assesses for security recommendations. However, this is limited to Azure workloads only. If we look at Azure Defender On, once called Security Center Standard, we shift focus to a protection and response model, which extends across all clouds, including third party and on premise environments. This tier will enable enhanced features such as just-in-time access, adaptive application controls, and rich insights via the regulatory compliance dashboard. What's more, this adds the required threat protection and automated responses for all workloads. Back in the overview pane, we get a bird's eye view of our entire platform. If I work along the top, you can see our subscriptions, third-party clouds, active recommendations, and our current security alerts. We also have several security tiles. Today, I'll focus on the Azure Secure Score, but notice that with Azure Defender enabled, you'll also gain insights to regulatory compliance, resource health, insights, and threat protection reporting. If I access the Azure Secure Score tile, we drill down to the next level and identify the security posture of our subscription. The higher the score, the lower the identified risk. Notice that in this environment, I have 15 management groups and 26 subscriptions, each of which highlights their own score percentage and lists any unhealthy resources. I'll select Cyber Security SOC and view the recommendations. From here, we can see a summary of the biggest risks to resources and the impact that will be made by implementing the suggested security settings. The more recommendations we implement, the higher our score will be. 
and this is dynamic, so expect fluctuation. For example, Microsoft is continually adding value by detecting new threats which may result in new controls being added. Another example may be when you add additional resources to your environment. These will be evaluated against security controls, and if best practices are not observed, then scores will decrease. Let's look at the first recommendation, Enable MFA. Now I know that you covered identities in your last video, but I wanted to reiterate that 99% of attacks could have been prevented by simply enabling these controls. If I drill down into the recommendations, we can see a broad range of controls that have been reported. This includes recommendations across subscriptions, virtual machines, and cross-cloud connectivity. Let's look at Enable MFA across all accounts. As you can see, this shows me a description of the control, but perhaps more importantly, the remediation steps. Now I do want to highlight that the remediation steps are continually tested and updated to ensure that they perform as expected. However, if you decide you don't want to implement a particular control, you can exclude it. Also, notice that the remediation can be initiated in a couple of different ways. This could be manually, through triggering a logic app, or by configuring a policy definition. Ultimately, the steps that you take to resolve security warnings are down to your individual circumstances, but I think you will agree this consolidated view makes addressing security concerns that much easier and simplifies the process for administrators. Thanks, Ali. I totally agree, and I love the way that it adds a gamification feel to managing your security posture. And for our viewers, I just want to reiterate Ali's point. Most companies are on a journey, and therefore the score is nothing more than a life cycle that reflects the changes on the platforms in which you choose to operate. It's therefore up to you to continually review your security posture so that you may identify risk and in turn act to remediate. Now, we've just announced a new and improved Microsoft 365 Security Center experience that consolidates several security solutions into a single portal. This will empower administrators to do things like manage endpoint protection, cross-product investigation, and compliance configuration. So Ali, tell me, does this replace the Azure Security Center? No, not at all. The Azure Security Center looks after resources in your Azure subscriptions, whereas the new Microsoft 365 Security Center is the home for monitoring and managing security across your Microsoft identities, data, devices, apps, and infrastructure. If I navigate to security.microsoft.com, we can see all the Microsoft 365 Defender services, such as Defender for Endpoint, Endpoint Management, and Defender for Office 365 have been consolidated into a unified portal. The overview pane is comprised of several security tiles. This includes our Microsoft Secure Score, any identities that may be at risk, and device compliance. The Microsoft Secure Score, once again, provides a bird's eye view of the entire Microsoft 365 platform. This ensures that we can quickly visualize how many secure points have been achieved and ascertain opportunities to improve. Actions to review provides a clear summary of items that have regressed, and we can also see what needs to be addressed as well as what has been planned. Improvement actions give clear guidance on where to improve your score, listing recommendations in order of importance. Each action shows the status, whether it has regressed, the category, and the product alignment. It also indicates if you have the correct license to implement that control. Let's investigate turn on sign in risk policy. Here we can see the points that can be achieved by activating the control. The three points of interest are action plan, at a glance, and implementation. Action plans are automatically marked as completed once the control has been actioned. However, prior to this, you can choose to plan the activity, accept the risk, resolve through a third party, or plan an alternate mitigation. At a glance details the category, the product, and what control is protected. It also highlights the user impact, which details what will happen when the control is applied, as well as the list of the users that will be affected. Implementation details include the prerequisites and steps to implement the control. Steps from here could be copied into a company's change control system, which would typically be required before a setting is approved. 
You can also see the implementation status along with the remediation steps, which again are continually tested and updated by Microsoft to ensure that they perform as expected. When completed, you can email the control, create a task in Microsoft Planner, or even post a message to Teams. Then, when you're ready to implement, select Manage, which will forward you to the correct portal where we can complete the configuration. The History tab will be of particular importance for service reporting. This shows the actions in Secure Score over a period of time. By customising, we can view a detailed history of the activity and depict where the scores have fluctuated. Metrics and trends highlight how our score compares to other organisations, in addition to regression trends and improvements marked as risk accepted. Thanks for clarifying, Ali. So to summarise, although there are two security portals, both of which supply administrators with a heightened awareness of security posture, there are subtle differences. Azure Secure Score provides recommendations for our cloud infrastructure resources. This includes things like SQL, virtual machines, containers, networks, IoT, and app services. In contrast, the Microsoft 365 Security Score provides administrators with improvement actions for your Microsoft identities, data, devices, apps, and infrastructure. Therefore, in a typical enterprise environment, you'll likely be working with both. So now we have a better understanding of the security tools available. What does Microsoft offer to help companies ensure that they stay abreast of industry regulations? Compliance Manager is a tool that has been created to simplify risk assessments and automate mitigation. As you can see from the overview pane, we have two key tiles, our compliance score and key improvement actions. The compliance score reflects a shared responsibility model. Microsoft will manage controls such as the physical infrastructure and networking, while customers will remain responsible for all the data policies that adhere to their specific industry regulations. Improvement actions provide clear guidance on how to improve your score, highlighting the relevant regulations, test status, and control assignments. Recommendations are listed in order of importance, but you can change the filter as required for custom reporting. Let's investigate one of the controls. Create customized DLP policies for personal data. From the overview pane, we can see a summarized view of the control. This includes implementation and test status, points achieved, and to whom the control is assigned. If we focus on the implementation status, we can see several states alongside a date. The how to implement lists detailed information, including licensing requirements and remediation steps. We can also add our own implementation notes if required. Finally, when we are ready to complete the configuration, we simply click Launch Now to be redirected to the correct portal. Testing provides a change control function, allowing you to enter notes, dates, and a status. Standards and regulations will detail the control, family, and the regulation. And you can also update any relevant collateral that you may require on the Documents tab. Switching back to the main view, you'll notice the Solutions tab. This highlights different views that are sorted by specific compliance solutions. This includes audit, data classification, data loss prevention, and the opportunity for improvement. Assessments will help you implement data protection controls specified by compliance, security, privacy, and industry standards. Assessments include a number of basic templates, such as Data Protection Baseline, GDPR, ISO 27001, and NIST. We can also purchase premium templates, including the templates aligned to each country. Furthermore, you can author your own templates. This could be from a sample Excel file or by extending additional templates with additional controls. In summary, Microsoft Compliance Manager helps organizations manage data protection and meet industry regulations by identifying needed control adjustments to reduce risk. Ali, thank you so much for joining me today. I think what's really resonated with me is the fact that even with the current skill shortage, Microsoft are providing the tools that will empower companies to both protect their intellectual property and ensure customer confidence. In my next video, I'm going to start investigating networking and look at the tooling that we can deploy to control network traffic and protect resources from unauthorized access. 
This will include network security groups, firewalls, DDoS protection, traffic manager, and monitoring. I hope you'll join me and as always, welcome any suggestions that you may have. Until then, stay safe and thank you.